Will Kenny Omega become the new Impact Wrestling World Champion? The North split seems to be imminent at this point. Final resolution, preview and predictions. And Scott Demore fires back at the WWE with a tremendous tweet. All this and more are coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. Hey folks, welcome to Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. We're heard right here on the Impact Lounge. Just a reminder, in case you haven't done it yet, you can head on over to my new YouTube channel, the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. The Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. If you like what you hear on Shooting Up North right here on the Impact Lounge, you might like some of my other content on the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. Feel free to check it out, and please feel free to hit that subscribe button. Once again, it's the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. All right, let's get into it. Could Kenny Omega become the Impact Wrestling World Champion? I think it's a very good possibility we're going to see Kenny Omega with the Impact Wrestling World title around his waist in the near future. I know they, they kind of teased a thing with Rich Swan. Rich Swan wanted to leave, but he wasn't on the list because they said the, the, the world champion was out there. Rich Swan, he said he thinks he's the world champion. So they're kind of teasing a possible, possible upcoming um, issue and a possible upcoming match between Rich Swan and the Impact Wrestling World Champion and Kenny Omega, the AEW World Champion, and I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna lead to a match, and I think, I think we're gonna see Kenny Omega become the Impact Wrestling World Champion for a bit at least. I, I know um, Don Callis when he brought in Kenny Omega, in case you didn't um, catch it, he called Kenny Omega the real World Champion, and he's obviously not on Team Impact. He's on Team Kenny Omega right now, and um, it's it's. It's going to lead to some really, really good, uh, a really, really good storyline and really, really good TV. So I'm very, very intrigued on on how this is going to uh, transpire. But I do think we're going to get that match: Kenny Omega versus versus Rich Swan, uh, title versus title. I'm not sure if it'll be on AEW or if it'll be on Impact. Uh, I'm guessing it'll probably be on AEW just because they have a bigger fan base. Uh, right now, more people are watching AEW Dynamite than they're watching Impact Wrestling uh, right now. But um, I think Kenny Omega is going to walk away with the Impact Wrestling World title. I think he's going to walk away. He's going to have that belt for a bit. He's going to be the AEW and the Impact Wrestling World Champion. And it's just going to uh, add to the legend of Kenny Omega. And uh, Don Callis is probably going to turn his back on Impact Wrestling and, and help him win the Impact Wrestling World Championship. Um but that's 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 my feeling. That's my gut feeling. And then you gotta think, well, well, if he's going to beat Rich Swan for the Impact Wrestling World Title, who's gonna save Impact Wrestling? Then I'm I'm sure from there they would go to a storyline. If it in fact happens, uh, my feeling is they would go to a storyline that somebody needs to come in and save Impact Wrestling from Kenny Omega and and, and Don Callis, and we'll have a few um, we'll have a few challengers um, attempting. Uh, to regain the Impact title for Impact Wrestling, and they'll fail. Uh, we might see Sammy Callahan. We might see uh, Chris Bay. Uh, Rich Swan will try to get it back. Uh, but there's one man. There's one man in my mind. If they do this storyline, that legitimately save Impact Wrestling from a Kenny Omega title reign. If that's the storyline that they're going to go with, and that one man, and I think you know who I'm thinking about, Johnny Swinger. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm thinking about Moose. Moose is the only man. Moose, Johnny Swinger. Moose is the only man that can legitimately reclaim the Impact Wrestling World Title from Kenny Omega and and Don Callis. Should they go with this storyline, and which I have a gut feeling that they're going to go to, that they're going to go with. So Moose chasing Kenny Omega for the Impact Wrestling World Championship would be absolutely fantastic. 
absolutely fantastic. I can see Moose showing up at AEW, uh, demanding a title shot, you know, doing a run-in on AEW, Kenny Omega coming back to Impact Wrestling, doing a run-in on Moose. Lots of possibilities there. I, I could envision this thing happening. And uh, let me know what your thoughts on that are. Uh, I think it would be fantastic if they if they did that. They, it's this, this Kenny Omega thing, though, despite what the internet is saying, it's not a one-off. I don't believe it's a one-off at all. It's going to be going on for a while, uh, in my opinion. Uh, but I really, I'm, I'm really digging Kenny Omega winning the the Impact Wrestling World Title and Moose coming in to to save to save Impact Wrestling from Kenny Omega and Don Callis. So that's 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 what I'm thinking. Uh, let me know what you think as well. Let me know what you think as well. Um, put put your comments in. Let me know your feelings on that. Uh, just think, Kenny Omega versus Moose for the Impact Wrestling World Title. Well, that would be fantastic. That would be a fantastic match, and I, I for one, would that that for one would be a legitimate dream match. And I know Impact Wrestling likes to use the word dream match a lot, the words dream match a lot, and that's two words, not one. So the words dream match a lot, and Moose versus Kenny Omega, in my opinion, would be a legitimate dream match. And hey. I, I could fantasy book in my head. I could dare to dream, and and th- this is my uh, this is what I have in my head right now. So hopefully, hopefully, um, what's in my head becomes reality because I would love to see that happen. Okay, so the Kenny Omega segment, the Kenny Omega segment uh, took place in Impact Wrestling, and a number of fans weren't happy with it. A number of fans didn't like it. They thought it was boring. They said it was a they they said it was a waste of time. They said it was uh they didn't think it was good. I thought it was perfect. I thought it was exactly the way it should have been. I thought it was exactly the way it should have been. I mean, what were they expecting? What were you expecting? Were you expecting Kenny Omega to to rush into the ring and start hitting V triggers and 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 one-winged angels on on all the talent at Impact Wrestling taking them out one by one? Were you expecting him to show up with the with the Young Bucks and and a clean house of Impact Wrestling? Were you expecting um, some Impact Wrestling wrestlers to, to come out and and um, run after Kenny Omega throughout the uh, throughout the Nashville studio and out to the outside and uh, and and AEW wrestlers show up and there's a huge brawl takes but what were you expecting? <laughs> what were you expecting? This is exactly exactly the way it should have been. Exactly the way it should have been, and they the people were upset. Oh, they didn't reveal much. They really didn't talk about oh, why they were there. They didn't reveal much. They just talked about themselves. That's perfect. The whole idea was to leave the fans guessing, to leave the fans guessing, and to make sure that as they're guessing, that they're curious enough that they want to tune into the next show. Some people are like oh, they didn't reveal nothing. Now I got to tune into AEW Dynamite. To find out, because they said they're going to be on AEW Dynamite, so do I get tuned in there to see what's going on? Yes, that's the whole idea. <laughs> that's the whole idea. That was it's it, it was a great segment. I enjoyed it immensely. Don Callis was 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 perfect in that segment. And I know BQ he did uh, he did a podcast and he he agrees. B, Don Callis was absolutely perfect. Actually, this was this was BQ's favorite Don Callis's uh, segment. I think ever in Impact Wrestling, and and rightfully so. It was perfect. He was absolutely perfect. Josh Matthews didn't get in much, didn't get in many questions, and that's fine. That's fine. You know, he wasn't meant to. He was meant to try to ask questions, but he was his, his role was just to get you know pushed to the side, and and you know Don Callis, Kenny Omega, they're the they're the important ones, not Josh Matthews. So Josh Matthews tried to get in some questions. He was ridiculed a lot. And that's exactly the way it should have been. You know, all these people are always oh, a boring segment. It sucked. It was stupid. It's not what we wanted. It's exactly what I wanted. That was it. Was great. It was it was a great segment. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And I'm looking forward to more segments on Impact Wrestling with Kenny Omega. And I'm looking forward to seeing uh, how Rich Swan how Rich Swan uh, reacts after not being allowed to to go outside, which I thought was a might have been a little silly. They they didn't let Rich Swan leave the building. Usually you can't go into the building because they're not on the list. But but he couldn't leave the building because <laughs> he wasn't on the list. So he was like trapped inside the studio. He wasn't allowed to leave. 
unless there was a unless that was like the west exit and he just had to leave through the east exit but whichever whichever exit he he had to walk through he wasn't happy and it's definitely going to lead to something between uh, rich swan and kenny omega i you know i i wouldn't be surprised if if rich swan eventually shows up on AEW TV. And like I said earlier, I, I do think Kenny Omega is going to eventually be the Impact Wrestling World Champion, which would create a lot of buzz for Impact Wrestling. And um, my fantasy booking in my head, I have... Um, well, I don't want to go... I already explained it, so I don't want to explain it again. I don't want to talk in circles. <laughs> so so uh, we all know how I feel about... Uh, about um, uh, the fantasy booking that's in my head, so I won't I won't go into it again. Uh, but um, yeah, no, the the segment was perfect. The segment was perfect. I, I enjoyed it, and and the Tony Khan segment was was terrific as well. That was a great segment as well. So there's a, a lot of lot of good things happening right now between AEW and Impact Wrestling, and and the winners are really not AEW. Or Impact Wrestling, but the winners are the fans. Yeah, that's my opinion. The winners are the fans. I know that sounds cliche, but the winners are the fans, and um, we have a lot to look forward to in this Impact Wrestling AEW uh, partnership. All right, let's move on. The North, the North, the, the North is split. Seems to be imminent. They seem to be headed for a split, one hundred percent. And I don't know if it's because Ethan Page is leaving or if it's because, you know, or if Ethan Page is staying and they decide, oh, well, let's split them up. I think splitting them up, if Ethan Page is staying and they decide to split them up, I think that's a mistake. I think that's a mistake mm. because they're the best tag team in Impact Wrestling. I know you got the good brothers there, but my opinion are, my opinion is that the, that the North are the best tag team in Impact Wrestling today and one of the best tag teams in the absolute world today. Uh, so splitting them up would be a mistake because we really didn't get a a good feud between the Good Brothers and the North. They, we, they had a few matches, but there wasn't really a wasn't really a, a must-see feud between the two. And, and I think they need to get that done. I think they need to get that done because if they split up the North and Ethan Page is staying, uh, there really aren't too many tag teams right now that can challenge... The Good Brothers. Uh, well, you have the Motor City Machine Guns. You know, that's one tag team. Uh, but after that, you, you know, you got Triple XL. You got the Deaners. You know, not, nothing too exciting, unless unless the Young Bucks come in or something. Uh, but but the rumors that Good Brothers are actually headed to AEW for a match with the Young Bucks. And nothing's been confirmed on that yet. But uh, that's that's the rumor. Uh, but I think the North should stay together. Not that I don't think that they could be singles wrestlers. I think they could be fantastic single wrestlers. I think either Ethan Page or Josh Alexander can have great runs as the Impact Wrestling World Champion. Uh, but I would I would like to see them stick together if Ethan Page is staying as the North and have them get into a real meaningful feud with the Good Brothers. And plus, you know, there's the rumor out there is that the North uh, and FTR might be hooking it up as well. So um, you want to keep them together. Here's here's what I'm thinking though. Here, more fantasy booking in my head. More more fantasy ideas in my head. How about a a page to AEW storyline? They're making it seem like they're splitting up, and you could do a storyline. Now that we have the partnership, that AEW and Impact Wrestling both are are bidding for the services of Ethan Page, and the storyline is that he needs to choose between the two. And he shows up on AEW TV and he says that he has decided that he is going with AEW and he's about to sign the contract. FTR comes out. Actually, no, before they come out, Josh Alexander would come out. Josh Alexander would come out and try to talk him into staying with Impact Wrestling. Then as he's doing that, as Ethan Page is about to sign the AEW contract... FTR comes out. They attack Josh Alexander, start beating him down, and then Ethan Page realizes what's important. He drops the AEW contract, helps Josh Alexander fight off FTR, picks up the Impact Wrestling contract, and then he signs it. And all along that he has already signed with Impact Wrestling. But I think that would be great. I think that would be a great uh, storyline as well. More, more fantasy storylines in my head. Sorry, I, I guess this episode is fantasy storyline day for Lewis Carlin. But that's I, I've been thinking about this stuff. You know what what the, each wrestler could be doing in this um, in this partnership, and that's that's another idea that I had. 
and I, I think that would be a, a great idea as well. Uh, but uh, but nonetheless, uh, I think the North are, are um, they seem to be on their way for to a split. And uh, whether this fantasy booking in my head actually becomes reality, I'm I'm not sure. Uh, but the reality is the North seems to be heading for a split in Impact Wrestling, and we will keep our eyes on that for sure. Okay, final resolution. Final resolution is upcoming, and let's go over the matches quickly. Uh, in case you're not sure of all the matches, I'm just going to run them down, quickly give you my predictions. As we know, in the main event, Rich Swan taking on Chris Bay for the Impact Wrestling World title. Rich Swan will retain. He will not uh, lose the belt to Chris Bay. Rich Swan will retain the title. We have Carl Anderson one on one with Ethan Page. I'm going with Carl Anderson. The Ethan Page Josh Alexander storyline of them splitting is going to continue here. There's going to be miscommunication between the two, and Carl Anderson will uh, sneak out a victory uh, in that one. So Carl Anderson wins that match against Ethan Page. Uh, Dion, Diana Perrazzo, one-on-one, defends the uh, knockouts uh, title against Rosemary. Uh, Diona Perrazzo will successfully defend her title against Rosemary. Then we have Tennille Dashwood and Caleb with a K against Eddie Edwards and Alicia. And this is weird because Alicia, up until like 30 seconds ago, she wanted to be a part of, of uh, Dashwood and uh, Caleb with a K's um little group there uh, but suddenly she doesn't want to be a part of it anymore so um, she is teaming with Eddie Edwards against Dashwood and Caleb with a K and um, Eddie Edwards and Alicia are not going to lose this match I'm sorry I'm sorry Eddie Edwards is not going to come back and and lose uh, and take a pinfall to Dashwood or Caleb so um, uh, this match unless unless Sammy Callahan gets involved and distracts Eddie Edwards Eddie Edwards runs off to chase Sammy Callahan leaving Alicia in the ring by herself but I don't think he would do that to his wife <laughs> I don't think you I don't think he would do that to his wife so Eddie Edwards and Alicia go over in in this match then we have Tommy Dreamer against Larry D and and in an old schools and rules old school rules match and this is this is rare for Tommy Dreamer because he's never in an old school rules match I, I don't remember the last time he was in an old school rule match and impact wrestling so this is this is a rare rare thing for Tommy Dreamer you know to be in this uh, this type of match and he's taking on Larry D and uh, Larry D admitted to the shooting of Johnny Bravo, you know, and uh, he was found guilty. Uh, but this this match is uh, <laughs> so. If Larry D wins this match, uh, he gets to, he's a free man. So all the the charges will be dropped. So if he wins this match, the charges will be dropped uh, in this uh, against Larry D. The the attempted murder charges will be dropped. But but if um, if Dreamer wins. Then Dreamer is going to uh, have to uh, escort Larry D to jail. I think that's what, or Larry D has to go to jail. So, so Larry D is going to want to win this match. Otherwise, he's going to have to go to jail for attempted murder. So, so I'm picking Larry D because I don't think Larry D is going to go to jail. <laughs> I think Larry D is going to win his freedom. Uh, all all charges against Larry D will be dropped at final resolution. Then we have Eric Young against Rhino. I'm a little disappointed because I want to see Joe Doring in the ring. We've seen Joe Doring a lot. Uh, I was uh, this should have been Joe Doring with Eric Young, and they should have added Eric Young against Cody Deaner, a uh, second match. Uh, but uh, or Joe Doring, uh, Joe Doring against uh, one of the Deaners. Uh, but I really want to see Doring in the ring. But nonetheless, it's Eric Young against Rhino. I think Eric Young's going to win this one. I think Eric Young goes over on Rhino, which Joe Doring is going to help him, and. Um, I think uh, they're going to beat down Rhino and then and then Heath, and then Heath's going to come out and make the save, and then we're going to have uh, Rhino and Heath feud with Eric Young and Joe Doring, and then the defeat Rohit challenge. Apparently, this, apparently this is the last defeat Rohit challenge, and uh, they made the indication on the last um, Impact Wrestling show, which which is just a clear indication that that uh, Rohit Raju is not going to uh, successfully. Um, defend his title here and uh, there was a little segment with TJP where TJP you know indicated that it's the final I think Rohit Raju actually said it will be my final Rohit Ro, Ro, defeat Rohit challenge and TJP said well good luck on the final defeat Rohit challenge which means TJP is showing up as suicide 
and uh, will defeat Rohit Raju for the X Division Championship, and they will allow TJP to hold on to that title as TJP, because he'll reveal that it's him, and that's suicide, and TJP will become the new X Division Champion when all is said and done with final resolution. And then we have Hernandez taking on Falaba in a it's 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 not build this but I'm billing it as a Hernandez gets his money back match <laughs> so Hernandez against Falaba and it's they have special referee Kiera Hogan and special ring announcer Tasha Steeles not sure why they threw that in there I know they have they 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 they're in possession of the money right now uh, but you know if they have the money why do they, or unless uh, maybe Falaba has the money? I don't know. I, I think Tasha Steeles and Kara Hogan still have the money. Maybe we should just put together a GoFundMe or something and just raise the money for Hernandez. So this whole silly, this whole silly feud with between Hernandez and Falaba about getting his money back just ends. So, 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 so it just ends because it's 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 very silly. Um, but anyway. Uh, and th- you think though that if if Hogan and Steeles they have the money they would want to remain as far away from Hernandez as possible, but apparently they want to get involved in the match. So someone's gonna have the money. Someone's gonna walk it. And I think Hernandez will finally get his money back, and this whole silly feudal ends. Uh, so I got Hernandez going over on Falaba and finally getting his money back, and that'll be the end of it. And then we have uh, Havoc and Nevea taking on the Sea Stars. The Sea Stars coming back. That's that's good to see. Uh, fortunately, they unfortunately they have no shot at winning this match, uh, but um, but the Sea Stars are back. It's it'd be good to see them a second time, and I'd like to see uh, Impact Wrestling sign them to a deal. I like the Sea Stars, uh, but in this case they have no shot at beating Havoc and Nevea, uh, so Havoc and Nevea go over there. So that's the final resolution card. It's going to be a great one. Lots of really good matches, and hey, AEW fans should tune in and watch it. Uh, because there's going to be a lot of great wrestling on Final Resolution, on the Final Resolution show. So I'm looking forward to it. It's December 12th. Don't miss it. And uh, Chris Bay, I just want to say um, good luck to Chris Bay. December 12th is unofficially Chris Bay Day as he, one, he's competing in the New Japan Pro Wrestling Super J Cup, and two, he's meeting Chris Bay, um, sorry, he's me- meeting Rich Swan for the Impact Wrestling World title, so it's unofficially Chris Bay Day on December 12th, so I want to wish him well in the World title match, which I don't think he's going to win, and I want to wish him well at the Super J Cup, uh, so um, good luck Chris Bay on on both um, the Super J Cup and your World title shot, and I'm going to end it this way, um, no dumb comments today, but dumb comments will be back on on either my next show or, or very, very soon. I just didn't have time to, to run through all the comments. Uh, but dumb comments, uh, don't worry, dumb comments are coming back. But I just wanted to end it, end it this way. Uh, Scott Demore fired shots at the WWE in a terrific tweet. And I'm going to read the tweet right now. Um, he was responding to, um, uh, I know Triple H uh, threw shade on Impact Wrestling. Um, BQ did a podcast on that. And um, Tony Khan, uh, did, they did the All Elite Wrestling did the paid advertisement. Uh, so responding to the, the, the following of the paid advertisement from AEW, Scott Demore tweets, While I enjoyed watching AEW Dynamite on Wednesdays anyway, so why wouldn't Impact Wrestling take Tony Khan's and AEW's money? Get ready for it, guys. There it comes. <laughs> Let the whole world know that after a rotten Monday night, you get two back-to-back nights of great action, starting with Impact on Access TV every Tuesday night. <laughs> shots fired by Scott Demore, Or I should say, shots returned by Scott Demore. And he's right. Monday nights are rotten. It's terrible. It's horrible. Um, but you get back-to-back nights of uh, great action with Impact Wrestling and, and uh, AEW. Uh, so there you go. There you go. And uh, in, in case you think I'm crazy by saying uh, the WWE is rotten, I just want to – actually, I'm going to end it this way by saying um, coming up on AEW, um, WWE – I'm sorry. Coming up on WWE, uh, Goldberg actually uh, – Stated that Roman Reigns is next. That's right. Goldberg says Roman Reigns. Oh, 
Oh, I'm sorry. I uh, that that uh, that sentence put me to sleep. I'm sorry. Oh, so that's uh, that's uh, well. Uh, Impact Wrestling and AEW have this have the buzz right now with this terrific partnership. Goldberg uh, says Roman Reigns is next. Ugh. Ugh. I'm sorry. I'm just trying, fighting to keep my eyes open. Okay. All right, folks. Well. <laughs> That's enough for me today. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. This is Shooting Up North, and we are here right here on the Impact Lounge. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye bye.